Well, well, well. The golden hobo is getting divorced. I am so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy about this. So many people are tagging me <laughs> in this breaking news. Let me tell you why I'm happy, okay? It's not because I don't believe in love. Obviously, I do or wouldn't be married. I never believed in that couple to begin with because I think that Gary, Gary is um, a hobo schedule. Not the worst kind, but he's on that spectrum, the hobo schedule spectrum. And remember, if you didn't know anything about him, he um, had dated, you know, that woman uh, criticized her weight, um, kicked her out, like treated that woman so bad. The one from The Hollywood Reporter, I've done videos on this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go see the playlist. Literally made her like slip him money under the table so he could pay at restaurants even though she was bankrolling them. So I hated him after that article. I never really believed in his like, Meh, like his tear. Like, I'm sorry, but so many men are using their like vulnerability to just manipulate women more and I'm not falling for it and I hope you don't either. It's everything. I don't want to go back into all the things I hate about that man. What I know of that man. I don't know him. I don't care about him. And I know that the editors and producers absolutely control the narrative. Um, they tried to sell it on the premise that he, he never thought he'd date again because the love of his life died. Uh, yeah, he dated immediately after she died. Anyway, and, and screwed that woman over. And then also screwed over all the other women on that bachelor whatever. And uh, and then all of a sudden, and then, and then chose to pick me. Chose to pick me. But she's not as much of a pick me as I thought she was. And that is why I'm so happy they're divorcing because it seems as though the reason that they are divorcing is because they couldn't settle on where to live. This brings me to my point that I try to make all the time. Do not try long distance relationships without thinking it through because that man will either A, move to your town and not make friends and wear you out and then you become his mother because he already doesn't know how to make friends because under, under patriarchy he's been socialized to like not do that well and usually men are too lazy to actually figure that out for themselves so uh, he will like smother you but usually what happens almost always is that man expects you to move to his little town uproot your life leave your family leave your job your even your culture your language and go to over an ocean to settle into his life with his family who are your in-laws not your family and you will hate your life because now you're trapped and you have given up everything to be with this man who you oftentimes don't find out until you're in his little kingdom that he sucks and he's not the man you thought he was. And especially on his territory, he's going to fall into his little king babiness unless he works really hard to fight it. And so the fact that they could not decide on a place to live, and it seems like in their little interview they did, that fa their families were both so important to them and that's why they just couldn't figure out a solution. So in the end, she did not let him force her to center him because that's what I was afraid of. A, that she didn't sign a prenup and he was gonna take all of her money, but apparently they did sign a prenup. So good for her, protecting that financial insecurity, man. You know that little hobo was already, was trying, was financially abusing that other lady. I've already done videos on that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch. But I was really concerned that she was going to leave her whole family. And based on like what we saw, uh, it seems like she's pretty tight with her daughter and the whole family. And I was like, is this family really going to be cool with grandma just moving and never seeing her again? And that's the thing. The f One of the things I hate about these shows is they like, they don't take marriage seriously. And by that, I mean, they're selling the, the dress, the moment the day they're selling the wedding but they are not actually uh honestly selling or talking about or even addressing what marriage is it is a business contract between two people and one of those people historically and presently has way less power in this system and even if she didn't birth his babies and quit her job to raise his baby and all those things that happens to with couples you know decades younger man because of the entitlements the king babiness that is planted in them from the day they're born and cultivated every day unless they fight hard to extract all that conditioning that man is going to assume that everything should revolve around him his family and what he wants and maybe he'll make a few compromises but at the end of the day he's the king of the castle and you're his little book and so the fact that they she 
family was basically seems to be the reason that they are cutting it off. They could not decide where to live. Going all the way to South Carolina, far away from their families, didn't sound like New Jersey. I don't know where they said they looked at a lot of places. Sounds like a woman who has spent her whole life pouring into her family maybe had second guesses after being, she was only with this dude for what, three months? And she's like, mm, yeah, mm. <laughs> So glad that she's just like tapping out. Would not be surprised if he had convinced, tried to convince her to move where he, where he was. And remember, there was that one woman, forget her name, one with the horses that he really screwed over big time. She brought that up in one of their conversations. She's like, hey, like this place is really important to me. I can't imagine myself leaving this place you know, with her horses and her whole life, which meant that she was already putting it out there that she's probably not all that willing to move. Not, not a surprise that he did not pick her. He did that, he, that man did her such a favor. I mean, he humiliated her on national TV, but uh, good, I'm glad that he didn't marry her because she put it out there. But it didn't seem like, like uh, Therese or whatever her name is, the woman that he married, ever said like, we should figure this out or like that, that she wasn't willing to move for him. She also had money, money, which is why most of us thought that he chose her in the end because he basically, she was always like, I like you, I love you. She said, I love you first. She did everything. I like you, I like you, I like, I like, I like, I like. And, and in the end, as soon as he found out she was like a financial, what, I forget what it is, but something with money, he was like, oh, huh, I didn't know that. You never told me that. And then all of a sudden, boom, he screws over the other woman and proposes to her. So. Uh, I'm glad that she signed a prenup. I hope he doesn't get a penny of her money. And I'm glad that she is not literally going to be the sidecar on this man's adventure of life. Because that is what these men will expect every woman to do for them. Unless they have really been working on themselves and have unpacked that entitlement that is cultivated more and more and more under patriarchy. And let me tell you, and I, I'm not going to speak for all men, but being from the South in the U.S., uh, me and some of my friends are called it old white man syndrome. I'm guessing it's not just the South. It's pretty intense there. Every Southern white boomer I know is like gets worse every year with their entitlement and they're just, they literally become children. Like as if they aren't, weren't already, <laughs> but it's exhausting. So imagine like whatever king babiness you made that we see in men my age who just refuse to do anything to help their wives parent their children or you know whatever weaponizing all the stuff we do the stuff I talk about all the time imagine that level of entitlement if it's been cultivated more and more and more every year by the time they're retired and they got nothing better to do but they feel like you know their age somehow makes them even smarter than all of us and more entitled kiss the ring burr can you imagine a marrying a man that old with that level of king babiness so I don't know whatever I don't care about these people. I don't know, Gary. Gary's maybe a nice man. And it sounds like his family, he's really close with them. Go home. Go hang out with your grandkids. Go hang out with your family. Stop dating women and using their money. And honestly, the dude probably did that whole thing just to get famous anyway. So, pff, I mean, maybe she did too. But the way they treated the women on that show made me want to barf. And speaking of which, Leslie, a horse lady, not only did Gary humiliate her, the media humiliated her too, trying to air this dirty laundry, which isn't dirty. Classic example of the way women are treated in divorce. Can you imagine all this stuff coming out and her having to try to defend herself? Her husband paid $340 a month in child support, two children, despite making $12,500 a month. Yet that whole article was about like, ugh, she has a spending problem. Like, why does she want that much money? She's a, a yoga tr teacher and trainer. Do y'all know how much yoga teachers make? She raised those children. Like, God, the way that show humiliated all those women. Really wish women stopped going to those shows. However, I love the friendship that was created. Still love Susan. She's a girl's girl. I love the friendships, but I hate Gary. And the whole premise of that thing is it doesn't take marriage seriously, especially for women and what women are expected to give up. And good for you, Therese, for not giving it up. For a woman that age to leave her entire community she spent her whole life pouring into, including her literal family, to go hang out with a little golden hobo in South Carolina, like thousands of miles from her family, that was always the worst idea to me. And I am so glad she thought about that and centered herself in what made her happiest, which it sounds like is family, not the golden phallus of Gary. I believe in love. What they had was not love.
That whole marriage was a sham. Good for you, Therese. Yeah.